Today we turn this overgrown jungle into a hub for all the things you can do with villagers in the game. To do this I will need a shulker farm, an iron farm, a villager breeder and so much more. Let's begin. Alrighty, so we need to gather a hell of a lot of materials for this first project. Shulker farms be like that. Okay, we should now have all the resources we need for this project. Now we can begin our journey to collect shulkers from the end. So arriving in the end we have one major problem. We no longer have an end island. So first things first we need to set up a rail path from the obsidian platform to the end gateway. Boom, there we go. The setup over here where the end island used to be is now ready to go. So all we got to do now is pick one of these portals to go through and then we need to go and find an end city. Okay so I've actually spent a bunch of time looking for end city close to one of these portals and it took me a little while but I finally found one. Let's set up a rail line and get in the shulkers over here first. Do a little something like this and then there we go. Aha! Genius! Uh, that's not right. <laughs> no! No 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 no! Oh my god! What is that guy doing? Okay let's try this again. You're now having trouble, so all we need to do now is place this fundamental main cart and fuel the thing. Aha! It's through the portal. Let's go through it. No! Oh no! Oh, that's super annoying. No! So after this attempt, I gave it one more try and managed to get a shulker through to the centre of the end successfully. And now that we have the shulker really close to the portal, it should just be a case of getting them back in the main cart and over to the portal itself. Oh no, <laughs> Enderman goes flying. <laughs> Aha! Right, so we've got the shulker in place. All we need to do now is press this button, and he's went through into the overworld. And there we go. We've actually moved our first shulker and we've made it all nice and safe. Now we need to go and move as many more as we can possibly get. It then took another 15 minutes to move the others. We actually got all three shulkers into the overworld. This is fantastic. So we just finished gathering all the resources we need for the shulker farm. We have so many shulkers of materials right now, but we're going to need all of them. And the best place for this is over in our spawn chunks. So with all that resource gathering out of the way, let's build this shulker farm. And there we have it, the shulker farm is complete. Now we just need to get one of these guys inside the farm. Now all we should take off to do is do something a little bit like this and we're off. Okay, so this guy is now in here. That is perfect. Now it's a good time to test this farm. So as you can see this farm has already broken. It has however created quite a few shulkers. The reason this farm isn't currently working is because we ran out of iron. And I'm not mining for more of that so let's set up an iron farm. So the iron farm is basically finished apart from a few things. One, we need the villagers to actually populate this thing and to produce iron. And two, we need one hostile mob. Normally people use zombies because they're really easy to get. I'm not normal. Instead we're going to be using pillagers which I basically need to wait around for a patrol to show up. This is going to take some time. I've been waiting for these guys for four hours and they're finally here. Let's capture a few. Aha, <laughs> you're trapped. Now we just need to get this guy to break his bow. Oh my god. It's broken, finally. Okay, right, now we need to get this guy all the way up there. Aha, so let's move this guy. Okay, he's in the right position. So let's get you in here, let's get you in. Aha, hello. <laughs> and there we go, this guy's now in place. <laughs> now we can remove all of this. Now we just need to get all the villagers. Let's take you over to the iron farm. Hey. Okay, this really didn't take long at all. Let's get all of these guys in place. And there we go, the last of the villagers is in place. Now we can remove all the scaffolding, get this farm finished. And with the setting of the sun, this commemorates the completion of our first ever iron farm in this hardcore world. Now we'll get the fun bit. Let's give this thing a proper test. Okay, so our one hour AFK session is up. 
We got quite a bit of iron throughout all of these chests. Okay, so I've sorted all the iron out and here it is. That is quite a decent amount. That's three stacks of iron blocks, nearly four stacks. This means we can fully resupply our beacon because we use the beacon base for that shulker farm. And we should also have enough iron to get all of the minecarts crafted so that we can use the shulker farm at full capacity. All right, so looking in here, you can see we've filled all of these silos with minecarts. Well, most of them. This last one here, we didn't quite have enough iron for that. So I'm just gonna leave this iron farm running for the rest of the episode. Basically, it's gonna generate iron for the rest of the episode because it's in these spawn chunks, meaning it is constantly loaded. So this finally means we can actually turn this farm on. So let me just come over here real quick. Flick the switch. So that wasn't as easy as I thought. So let's grab a minecart. Okay, it's not this platform, so it should be the next. Oh god, oh no no. That's a, that's a lot of shulkers. Okay, this one will do. Let's take this guy. Teleports down there, that's good. Goes into that minecart. So he should be taken over here. Okay, so while this farm is running, I think we should start work on doing some more villager things. So I want a dedicated area of the world that has all of our villager stuff in one place. That includes trading. That means of course we will be removing the villagers in this area. However, this area we can't have it nearby this region because these are the spawn chunks and we don't want this loaded all the time. So let's go exploring for a decent area. Okay, so I think I've found the region. We have ourselves a very big jungle biome. Building in jungles is fun, but there's one thing we need to tackle first. Let's remove all of the trees in the area. So we got all that jungle cleared and we got several shulker boxes of wood. We'll be making use of those very soon. Now we need to dig all this down to Y40. And there we go, the hole has been dug out. This took a really long time. In fact, we're now on day 651. I was planning on having this video finished by then. Now that that's out of the way, we need to decorate this area. So. Let's go and gather all the resources we need. So we have now finished gathering all the materials for this project in this chest. Let's move it all over to the project area. All right, there we go. Now that we've brought all the resources over to this area, now is the time to decorate this and bring it to its final form. And there we have it, this area is complete. And you know what, it didn't even take that long to do this. The longest part was actually making all of that concrete. That was kind of expensive. So a few bits of information about this area. So we've built this at, if we check our coordinates, Y40. So slimes can spawn. We do however get a lot of patrols, which is kind of interesting. Now my idea is this is meant to be the central hub for all of our villager needs in the world. Our villager needs being trading, farming, iron farms, and last but not least, raid farms and stuff like that. So that's why we've got these four doorways on each of the walls. Now in order to do all of these different projects, we need villagers, but more importantly, we need food because villagers require food to breed and then it saves me harvesting food whenever I need to eat as well. So what I'm thinking is we build some automatic crop farms. Alright, so this farm is now complete. The only thing we need now is villagers to populate the thing. Why are you being difficult? Ah, hello. <laughs> you want me to do that. And away you go. Now we wait. Hey, we got our first baby. And after a bunch of breeding, here's all the villagers we need for this crop farm. And... And there we go, the crop farm is done. And we're producing carrots. Okay, that's really good. Now let's get the storage system in place. And with the storage being finished, we've sealed up this wall, meaning this crop farm project is done. I have, however, left space in the back in case we ever want to upgrade this thing. So yeah, I put the carrots we had in storage in here, along with all the carrots that are being generated while we're working on this thing. I'm just going to leave it running because we're going to need a lot of these carrots in just a moment. So now that we've got the crop farm project done, it's time to move to the opposite side of this area here because over here I want to set up an area for trading. In order to trade with villagers, we need a lot of villagers to begin with. So we also need a villager breeder. We set up a really basic one out here to get enough villagers for that thing, but this won't do. So let's begin preparing this area. Okay. 
And there we go, we're one step closer to finishing this villager area project. You may be wondering what we actually built here, because you know a lot of this stuff is underground and wasn't actually visible in the time lapse. So for starters we have my own custom made villager breeder. You should totally use this villager breeder design, no one else's. Link in the description by the way. Your baby villagers go below the ground and then end up in this holding cell. This design was inspired by the friend of the channel, Not Nob Rock. He had one very similar to this in his hardcore world. It was as basically identical apart from the back system there. The idea is we can push this button, the villagers are then forced into that area at the back where a minecart will then go and pick them up. And if you're wondering, this is what the rail is like in the back here. Once the villagers are in minecarts, they come through the rail system and end up here where we get to choose their profession. And the best bit about this system is we can actually call new villagers from this button right here. So when we press this button, the villagers are sent off, they fall down and then they follow the rail network down below the floor ending up here. The idea is right that there's meant to be a zombie that converts the villager into a zombie villager where we can then send him away to wherever we need. So we've got two doors here. This one leads to nothing, that's where the trading area is going to be. However this one leads to a zombie villager conversion area. This design was directly inspired by the one flip designed. I'll leave a link to that in the description as well. This is a fantastic thing. It makes converting zombie villagers really easily. This has a capacity of 8 and it should only require two splash portions of weakness to do the full 8. So that's pretty good. However, you may be noticing we can't really use this system until we have a zombie. Now fortunately all we should really need to do is make a little hole in here and as you can see this area isn't lit up at all. This is very dangerous actually. Okay let's look around for a zombie. Ah oh, I picked it up. Okay. Aha. Okay he's in place. This thing is now ready to go. Okay so before we can begin trading with these guys we need to convert them back and forth to zombie villagers and then back again. That requires a lot of golden apples, which we have no one enough gold for. But not to worry, I have a plan. So my plan for getting lots of easy gold without building a gold farm is to raid desert temples and portal ruins. And the best bit about it, these things have golden apples in them. So let's go. Ah. Oh my god. <laughs> no way. <laughs> An enchanted golden apple in our first one. Wow. Oh that's awesome. What do you have? Oh my god, another one. Oh, that's amazing. And after going through all those portal runes, this is all the stuff I got. And the best bit about it was we got two enchanted golden apples. That wasn't even what I was looking for, but I'll happily take them. Which, speaking of, let's put them away for safekeeping. And with the collection of that gold, I class this project is finally done. This was a lot of fun. Thank you all to my patrons who allow me to keep making this content for you. If you want to be one, the link is in the description. If you do that, you get videos early, so go ahead and check that out. But yeah, if you like this, why not look at this video? You'll like it.